Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And uh, what we were discussing, we were discussing about the recombinant DNA technology in this particular unit. And so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the requirement of the two compartment system and we have discussed about how the, if you want to successfully want to perform the recombinant DNA technology, you have to understand the different types of processes such as uh, such as uh, polymerase chain reactions you are supposed to understand the ligations you have to understand the transformations and so on uh, apart from that you also supposed to understand the different types of enzymes different types of components which are important for the recombinant dna technology if you recall in the previous lecture we discuss about the requirement of the two component system where you are actually going to have the host cells and the transforming agents. So, in the host cells, uh, uh, we have uh, we have the different types of host cells. We have the prokaryotic host cells or the eukaryotic host cells. Within the prokaryotic host cells, we have the uh, E. coli and as well as the bacillus subtilis. There are many other uh, prokaryotic host cells which can be utilized for the purpose of recombinant DNA technology. But that we have not discussed in this particular uh, uh, in the in this particular lecture, or in this particular uh, in this particular um, uh, uh, chapter actually. And uh, so, uh, if you recall, we have in the previous lecture we discussed about the uh, prokaryotic host cells. So we discussed about the E. coli as a host cells, and as well as we have discussed about the bacillus subtilis as a host cells. And we at the end of the particular uh, co, uh, lecture, we have also discussed about the comparative analysis of under what condition you can be able to use the uh, E. coli as a host cells and under what condition you can actually be able to use the bacillus subtilis. Now, in today's lecture, we are going to start discussing about the eukaryotic host cells and uh, in the within the eukaryotic host cells, we will, we will start our discussion with the very simple. Uh, yeast as a uh, expression system and then slowly we will move on to discuss about the uh, insect cell line as a uh, uh, host, cell, uh, host cells or we will also discuss about the mammalian system. Uh, in this particular chapter we are not discussing about the plant as a host cells because that is beyond the scope of the particular chapter. So, as you can see we have the two different types of host we have the prokaryotic host or we can have the eukaryotic host. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the prokaryotic host where we have discussed about the E. coli or we have also discussed about the bacillus subtilis. Now, in today's lecture, we will discuss about the yeast, we will discuss about the mammalian system and we are also going to discuss about the insect cell line as the host. So, let us discuss and start the discussing about the yeast as uh, a host cells. So, yeast as a expression system, right. So, yeast as an expression system. So, yeast is the simplest unicellular uh, eukaryotic cell available for the protein production. It is easy to manipulate and the production cost is very, very low in comparison to the other eukaryotic expression system. It offers the most of the advantages available in the typical eukaryotic cell, but the, at the end, at the same time, it is also be a unicellular organism right so you can be able to do lot of a uh, uh, lot of type of manipulations what you have established already for the bacterial system you can be able to do it that for the e cell also in addition a large amount of genetic molecular and cell biology aspect of yeast is known and this knowledge has helped us to understand the protein production strategies and as well as the troubleshooting so yeast is widely studied organism just like we have discussed when we were discussing about the E. coli that the E. coli is widely studied bacterial species so that you know each and every detail about that particular bacteria. So, you can be able to manipulate the bacteria in a much better way compared to the other bacterial species. Similarly, in the uh, unicellular eukaryotic organisms, the yeast is 
extensively been studied because of its economic importance from the ancient time when the people were using the yeast for the alcohol production, when the people were using the yeast for the uh, bread fermentations and all that. So, they since the human since the civilization start since the uh, ancient times uh, people have realized the importance of the yeast they have also studied a lot of genetics molecular biology cell biology biochemistry of this particular organism and that kind of enormous information actually help to manipulate to help to utilize this particular host in a better way now, when you want to use the yeast as an expression system, you have the multiple choices. You have the yeast which is uh, going to be non-methalotropic or you can actually have the yeast which is the methalotropic. What is mean by the non-methalotropic? That means, these does not utilize the carbon source as methanol, right. These yeast actually survives on the other carbon sources such as glucose, fructose and other kinds of structures, right. So, they can be able to utilize other carbon sources such as glucose, lactose, maltose, starch and alkene. This means these are the species which are going to be used for the bread uh, fermentations, right. So, non-methalotropic uh, yeast uh, uh, host uh, are good in terms of that they do not utilize the methanol, but they also utilize the other carbon sources. The examples of this class are S. cerveci, the, the yeast which is called as bread yeast right or K. lactis and the Y. lipotica. These yeast strains are most often used for the fermentation to produce the alcohol. The major advantage of this class is better understanding of the molecular biology, biochemistry and the fermentation technology aspect of these strains, but still the technology is not been evolved to neutralize this class of yeast for the production of the heterologous protein. So, this class which is a non-methalotropic yeast is not being used for the protein production because it is not been utilized or not been explored for protein production. So, there is not machinery which has been developed like you have not developed the yeast vectors and all, all those kind of things which we are going to discuss in the latter part of this particular lecture series. Then we have the methalotropic uh, yeast. So, the major advantage of this class is the ability to utilize one carbon compound such as methanol as a carbon and energy source. In addition, these strains have a high level of methanol oxidizing enzyme and that allow them to be very strong and grow in very high density. The example of this yeast in this class are Pichia pectoris, Pichia angusta, uh, Pichia methanolica and uh, C. boedini. So, these are the strains which are going to be used in the protein production because they are going to use the methanol uh, and uh, they are also uh, their uh, complete machinery is already been developed for these yeast because they are resistant for the harsh conditions. So, they are good for uh, you know uh, for protein productions. Now, as when you want to use the yeast and expression system, you also should uh, know about the transformations like the DNA delivery. Although we are going to discuss all these in detail when we will talk about the DNA delivery system uh, in the subsequent lectures. So, you are going to use the lithium acetate and electroporation is the method popular for the transformation of the yeast and the vectors and selections. So, transformants are selected either using a oxotrop markers such as the URA3, LUT, TRIP1 or histidine 4 or the antibiotic resistance such as G418, hygromycin and all that. So, this is very very uh, you know important and uh, we are going to discuss in detail about how you are going to select the transformants, how you are, what are the different approaches one can use, how you can you do the blue white screening, how you can do the selection uh, markers using the antibiotics and all those kind of things. So, that we are going to discuss in detail. Now, talking about the different types of promoters uh, what are present in the yeast expression system. So, you can have the constitutive promoters or you can have the inducible promoters. Constitutive promoters are the promoters which are actually going to uh, going to give you the protein constitutively which means they are going to give you the proteins throughout their growth cycle. So, these promoters belong to the housekeeping genes and as a result the expression is non-inducible which means they will not going to induce. 
the protein production starts with the growth of the yeast and as a result it is proportional to the cell mass examples of these promoters are gap dh or gm12 uh, then you have the inducible promoters so inducible promoter is going to be require a inducer this means in this case you can actually be able to grow the cells at a very very high density in the flask right for example if you are trying to develop a protein which is toxic for the organism right so in those cases what you can do is you can just put the protein into inducible promoter and then you grow the cells for a very very high density once they will grow in the high density then you can actually ask and then you can add the inducers right uh, you will see the some of the examples when we will discuss about the protein production uh, in a subsequent lectures and uh, inducible promoters uh, will allow so once you add the inducers the, it is inducer is actually going to induce the promoters promoter activity and as soon as the promoter is going to be activated it is actually going to allow the production of the transcripts right it is going to allow the production of rna and once the rna is available it is actually going to allow the production of the protein and you know that the protein is toxic in nature so it is actually going to kill the organisms but by, by the time it is actually going to kill the organism the protein is already been produced so inducible promoter system is good in terms of producing a protein which is uh, harmful for the organism but it doesn't matter because as by the time it will be going to create the toxicity or it is going to generate the toxicity it is going to give you the sufficient quantity so examples are pickia pectoris which is expressing the two different types of uh, promoters such as ox1 and ox2 where the pickia augusta expresses the uh, methanol oxidase or the mox as a inducible promoter the promoter of uh, ox1 and mox are present in yeast vector and it has been used to drive the expression of the foreign protein the protein production is controlled by a balance of repression and inductions presence of other carbon sources such as glucose represses the transcription of ox1 gene but in the presence of the trace amount of methanol which is actually a inducer right it induces the ox1 promoter mediated protein production so this is the mechanism through which the inducible promoter is going to give you the protein production so it is actually going to give you the production when the the when the inducer which is actually the methanol in this case is going to be present so these are the some of the uh, expression system what is present in the yeast expression system you have the non methylotropic yeast strains you can have the methylotropic yeast strains within the non methylotropic you have the s cerbesi k lactase y lipotica s acidulis or z roxy then within that you are actually going to have the constitutive uh, uh, promoters or you can have the inducible system so you can within the constitutive promoters you can have the gap dph gphk tf rps gam1 or gap dh whereas in the inducible system you can have the us system adh1 lac4 adh4 and amy1 within the methylotropic you have the three strains that is the pickia pectoris pickia methylica or h polymorpha and the uh, promoter what you are going to use is the gap which is for the constitutive promoter or for the inducible you can have the ox1 ox2 you can have the mox or agas1 right so there are diversity of the uh, promoters there are city of host strain which are going to be available within the yeast and you can be able to utilize any of these now let's see the example how you can be able to do the protein production in the yeast right so protein production in the yeast could be of two types either you can actually be able to produce the protein within the cytosolic protein or you can actually be able to produce the protein which is secretory protein which means if you put the uh, if you put the secretory sequences or the sequ sequence within the uh, protein then it is going to be secreted out of the cell and is going to be present in the media so cytosolic proteins uh, the pro expression of the protein targeted to the cytoplasm is very high but the recovery is very difficult because the yeast has the very thick cell wall so breaking the cell wall and then releasing the content of the cell is a very very challenging talk so yeast cell is a very uh, is very hard and high pressure homogenization is used to disrupt the cell wall the recovery is very less and a fraction of total protein comes out will be very very low when you do a cytoplasmic targeted uh, productions 
whereas in the case of secreted protein production so when you do the protein tag with the secretory signal such as s cervici alpha mating uh, factor signal target the protein into the uh, into the secretory pathway right once it present in the secretory pathway it is going to be secreted into the media which means if suppose you have taken a flask right and suppose this is the back uh, east right this is the east right then it is actually going to secrete out of this cell okay as it means it is going to be present in the media so if you spin down and remove the east right if you spin down you are going to collect the supernatant from this it is actually going to have the protein which you are actually over expressing along with this you may have some minor component of the uh, east protein also which is also been secreted and that's why this protein is going to be extremely pure uh, compared to the protein which is going to be present in the cytosolic fractions the signal peptide is processed in the endoplasmic reticulum and golgi complex vesicular transporting system and appears in the culture media it is difficult to say which pathway will be useful for overexpression of a protein in the east expression system irrespective of the pathway chosen the protein production protocol in the system has a multiple steps what are these steps so the steps are this is what i have shown in a cartoon way right first what you are going to do is you are going to transform the yeast with the recombinant dna technology so you are going to take the recombinant dna right and you are going to transform the yeast and you uh, if you recall we have discussed right you either you are going to use the lithium chloride method or you are going to use the electroporations either of these method you are going to get the transform plate from the transform plate you are going to inoculate a single colony so you are going to take a single yeast and you will inoculate into a suitable media right and then you are going to put them into a shaking water bath for at 28 degrees celsius so this is the temperature at which the yeast is actually getting produced and then uh, you are going to put it for the uh, for the growth right so growth condition is 180 rpm and 28 degrees celsius so when you do it it is actually going to give you the confluent uh, growth right so it is going to give you a very high growth so you are going to put the uh, culture into the incubator at two, day, two days for 80, 28 degrees celsius with shaking at 180 rpm once that is been done then you can actually be able to allow the culture to reach to the od of 5 to 7 right so that means you are going to generate a culture which is very very high density then you are going to do the induction so you are going to induce the culture with a methanol of 1% volume by volume twice daily so you will actually going to add the methanol 1% volume by volume which means if you have a culture of 100 ml right then you are going to add the 10 ml methanol which means then volume by volume the 10% okay so this is 1% you are going to add 1 ml 1 ml of methanol and that will actually going to induce right and uh, you can do that induction every tol uh, twice daily right so that once that is been done then you can harvest the cells and analyze the expression onto the sds page so you can actually be able to centrifuge the cells you are going to collect the cells at the bottom and you are going to have a supernatant this supernatant is going to contain the protein right and that protein you can actually be able to analyze whether the protein is been produced into the sds page right and that you can actually be able to know right so this is all about the e coli as an expression system right uh, and you can be able to we have discussed very briefly about the different types of strains what are possible you can actually have the non methylotropic host strains you can have the methylotropic strains you can also have the uh, in either of these cases you can have the constitutive promoters or you can actually be able to use the inducible promoters and combination of these four species combination of these four factors will allow you to have the diversified choices so that you can be able to use the different types of yeast for the protein production as per your requirement so you can have the production which is going to be cytosolic you can have the production which is be secretory and so on right so depending upon your protein uh, qualities and interest you can be able to do the protein productions now let's move on to the next expression system so next expression system is a insect cell line expression system right and insect cell line expression system requires uh, the use of the virus that is called as uh, baculovirus so baculovirus is the virus which is going to be used for 
transforming the yeast cells and uh, that is what is called as baculovirus expression system. So, uh, insect cell line as an expression system right. So, as a eukaryotic baculovirus expression system offers the protein modification, processing and transport system compared to the yeast, the downstream processing and recovery of cytosolic protein is much easier in the baculo expression system. The different steps needed to produce protein are as follows. First, you are going to clone the foreign gene into the transfer vector, then you are going to generate the recombinant baculovirus vectors then you are going to screen the recombinant baculovirus, then you are going to culture the recombinant insect cell lines and then you are actually going to protein, do the protein productions. Now, let us take, uh, take a uh, quick look at what is the baculo expression system look like. So, in the baculo expression system what you have is you have a polyhydrin promoter. So, this is the polyhydrin promoter what you have right. And then you also going to have a cloning site for the foreign DNA. So, this is the cloning site for a foreign DNA and then you are going to have the polyhedrin termination site and a downstream region of the viral genome. So, this is the viral genome, this is the viral genome and within this, this is the cassette for protein production. So, where you are going to have the polyhedrin uh, upstream sequences, you are going to have the polyhedrin downstream sequences and within this you are going to put a cloning site. So, within this if you clone the protein it is actually going to be produced along with the genome right. So, when the virus is replicating it is going to replicate this portion also. So, the upstream and the downstream sequences from the viral genome helps in the homologous recombinations. The foreign DNA is cloned into the cloning site and the recombinant transfer vector can be propagated into the E. coli. This means it is actually a hybrid kind of vectors, it can actually propagate into the E. coli, it can also be propagate into the insect cell line. This is one of the approach through which you can actually be able to do the homologous recombination and as a result the this cassette is going to be replaced along with this component right and that is how this, this will go here and this will go here and as a result there will be the insertion of this cassette into the recombinant, uh, recombinant uh, virus right and that you can be able to use. So, insect cell lines are first transfected with the baculo virus to produce the transform insect cell line. It is subsequently transfected with the transfer vector containing the foreign DNA and allowed to grow. In one or two division a double cross event occur between the viral genome and the transfer vector with the help of the flanking viral genome sequences right. This is the flanking sequences what you present right and because of this the whatever is present in the transfer vector will going to be replaced into the uh, uh, baculovirus genome. And as a result the viral genome loses the polyhydrin gene and receive the DNA stretch from the transfer vector containing the polyhydrin promoter foreign DNA and the termination signal. And this is the way you are actually going to generate the recombinant baculovirus. Once you generated a recombinant baculovirus, you are going to transform that into the insect cell line and then you are actually going to screen the uh, recombinant uh, cell lines or recombinant baculoviruses and then you are actually going to use that for the protein production. And for the screening, uh, you are going to use the multiple methods right, you can actually be able to use the plaque method so that you can see whether the plaque is forming or not. Because if the virus is going to be generated, it is actually going to cause the plaque production. So, what you are going to do is you are going to take this from the stock, you are going to do the serial dilutions and then from the serial dilutions, you are actually going to place them onto a plate and then within the plate, you are going to measure what will be the amount of plaque which is going to be formed. Although we are not discussing any of these aspects, but if you want, you can be able to go through with this particular content and you can be able to know how you are going to perform the plaque assay and so on. Then you are going to do the protein production. So, you are going to have the culture media for the growth, you are going to have the maintenance and the culture of insect cell line. So, SF9 cell line is the cell line what is being used for the baculo expression system and it is derived from the ovaries of the uh, army worms and it is maintained in the TNH uh, insect media containing the 10 percent uh, BS and the gentamicin and the culture media for the protein production. So, baculo gold or the other serum free low protein media is suitable for the secreted protein as it facilitate the easy production. And these are the some of the steps what you are going to do. So, first step is 
you are going to do the transformation. So, you are going to seed the 10 to power 6 SF9 cells in a 60 mm culture dish and allow the cells to adhere to the dish right. So, this is what you are going to do. Then you are going to uh, transfect them with the MOI of 1 is to 10, MOI means for each cell how many bacteriovirus you are going to do. So, 1 is to 10 means for one cell you are going to put 10 uh, virus particles ok, that means MOI and you incubate the cells for 3 days at 27 degrees Celsius. The collect the cells and media centrifuge at 10,000 rpm for 10 minutes and uh, if the protein is secretory, the transfer the culture superintendent to the new tube and determine the protein concentration with the Bradford reagents. If the protein is cytosolic, then you discard the superintendent and wash the cell palette with the PBS and then you lyse the cells and analyze the protein onto the SDS page. So, this is what the full scheme it is going to show. It is going to have the first step in, in the first step you are going to do the transfection, in the second step you are going to do the screening, in the third step you are going to have the selected cells and then you are going to ask whether the uh, it is a secretory protein. So, you are going to use the supernatant or if it is a cytosolic protein then you can lyse and check the cytosolic proteins. Now, let us talk about uh, another uh, back, uh, expression system and that is called as the mammalian expression system right. So, mammalian expression system is the most advanced expression system which is available for the as a host for protein production right or for recombinant DNA applications right. So, similar to other expression system protein production in the mammalian cell, cell system can be achieved either from the vector present as the extra chromosomal DNA or the sequence is integrated into the genome through the homologous recombination to establish the permanent cell line. The expression from the transient or the expression cell line, permanent cell line can be from a constitutive or the inducible promoter. Irrespective of the expression mode in uh, mammalian system, the different basic step in use uh, required to produce the protein are as follows. First step you are going to clone the foreign DNA into the mammalian expression system, expression vector. So, you will, we will discuss about the mammalian expression vector into the subsequent lecture. Then you are going to transfect the cell line with the help of a recombinant construct that also we are going to discuss what are the different methods are transfection uh, available for the uh, mammalian cell lines. So, you can actually be able to use the lipofectamine or you can actually be able to use the calcium chloride method or so on. Then you are going to do the screening and selection of the transfected cell that also requires multiple method and multiple approaches. You can actually be able to use the antibiotic resistance, you can be able to use the complementations, you can be able to use the other kinds of selection pressures that also we are going to discuss into the subsequent lectures. Then you are going to use the culturing of the transfected cells. So, once you collected the transfected cell, you can actually be able to culture them and then you can actually be do the antibody production and uh, protein productions depending upon whether you are going to exploit the constitutive promoter or the inducible promoter. So, just like yeast right, here also you have the multiple choices, you have the um, uh, constitutive promoters, you have the uh, inducible promoters, you have the those uh, transient expression and the permanent expressions. These are some of the different types of cells what you can actually be able to use. You know that the mammalian cells are of different uh, origins right. You can actually have the uh, cells from the breast, you can actually have the cells from the kidney, you can have the cells from the liver, you can also have the cells from the brain, you can also have the cells from the, uh, from the immune system and so on. And depending upon the source of your protein which you want to express, you can actually be able to select the host appropriately. So, for example, you can have the different types of cell line. For example, I have CV1 and CV1 is a cell line which is being derived from the kidney. Similarly, we have the CHO K1 and which is actually from the ovary. So, if I want to develop a ovary protein, if I want to express a protein which expressed which I know that this protein is expressed very nicely into the ovarian cells, I will use the CHOK1. Similarly, we can have used the HELA cells and HELA cells is uh, cervical cells right. Similarly, we have the HEK293 which is the kidney cells and so on. So, depending upon the origin of your protein or you know that where the protein is expressing very well, you should be able to use the, some of these uh, cell lines. Now, as far as the expression system is concerned, you can actually have the two choices, you can have the transient expression or you can have the permanent expressions. 
the expression is high, but for short period time period. So, transient expression is where the gene if you put the your construct into a vector right and then vector goes inside the cell, but it does not integrate into the genome. So, because of that it will remain for uh, some time into as a extra chromosomal DNA and then it during that period only it is actually going to express uh, and uh, since it is present outside and it is actually uh, exogenous DNA it is going to be recognized by the cells uh, defense system and then it is actually going to be degraded by that. So, during this period of entry into the cell and during the and then until we it is not been degraded it is available for the transcription it is available for the transcription and translation. So, it is actually going to be expressed. So, that is why it is actually the expression is going to be high, but it is short time period right it is not going to be last for uh, weeks or months or something like that. So, the cell transfected with DNA express the protein until the 72 hours post transcription because it takes time for the cellular machinery to identify these foreign DNA and that is the period like 72 hours. The transient expression system is used to screen the cDNA library, isolation of a particular cDNA clone expressing the surface antigen and to test the applicability of the recombinant construct going to use for the permanent expressions. So, you always use the transient expressions before you go for the permanent expression because you are trying to see whether the protein is expressing or not. If you want to test whether the protein is expressing or not, then you can actually able to decide whether I will go with the transient expression or I will generate the permanent expressions. The permanent expression where you are actually going to put the flanking homologous sequences and because of that it is actually going to integrate into the genome. So, the permanent expression of a gene is possible if it will be integrated into the chromosomal DNA which means it is going to be integrated into the genome of the cell. That means, it is not going to be uh, recognized as non-self, it is actually going to be recognized as a self DNA because it is a part of genome now. right? The most crucial step to establish a permanent expression system for a gene is the frequency of integration events rather than the number of DNA uptake. In simpler words, the permanent X transfection depends on the recombinant frequency instead of the transfection efficiency. Irrespective of this, once the permanent transfection is being generated, once the permanent expression is being generated which you are going to do screening and all that and this is very, very complicated and it is beyond the scope of the current chapter. Uh, you are actually going to have the gene which is integrated into the genome. right? Now, what you can do is you can put that gene into a influence of a promoter that promoter could be a constitutive promoter or the indiscipline promoter and then you can be able to exploit the inducer. You can actually put the inducer into the cell and as, as soon as you put the inducer it is actually going to express the proteins. So, transient uh, expression it is uh, as I said it is uh, high, but short time right and uh, you can actually be able to. So, there are there are multiple steps which are required to transiently express a protein. For example, in this says I say I have taken an example of cos 7 cells and these procedures can be applied to other cell line with the slight modification and what are these steps? These steps are the first step is that you are going to do the DNA delivery. Uh, although we have written the transfection, but you can use the other methods also. And all these methods we are going to discuss when we will discuss about the DNA delivery into the uh, host cells, which is I think we are going to discuss in subsequent lectures. And once you have done that, you are actually going to do the screening part, right? So, you are going to do screening with the help of the antibiotics. In this case, we are doing it with the antibiotic. You can actually have the multiple methods of complementations, you can actually have the uh, blue white screening and all those kind of things. So, these are the uh, cloned screens right, these are the screened uh, cells where you have the recombinant DNA present right. Now, what you can do is you can propagate these and then you can centrifuge. So, you are going to collect the cell fraction and you are going to collect the supernatant fractions. Now, you can lyse these cell fraction and you will get you can be able to recover the intracellular cells. So, if the cell is if the protein is expressing as the intracellular cells you can actually be able to get the protein from here. If the protein is present in the supernatant, then it is actually going to be a secretory protein. So, the step 1 you are going to do the cloning of the foreign DNA into the appropriate mammalian expression vector. 
to obtain the recombinant DNA. Transfection efficiency is maximum for a supercoiled DNA and you can actually be able to purify the recombinant DNA by a mini prep kit to prepare the high quality supercoiled DNA. Mammalian vectors we are going to discuss in our subsequent lectures. Uh, then you are going to seed the cells, you are going to do the transfection right that is a step 2 right you are going to do a transfection. Then you are going to use the any kind of transfection reagents, you can actually be able to use the calcium chloride method and you can actually be able to use the bactofactin, you can actually use multiple method or multiple approaches what we are going to discuss when we are going to discuss about the DNA delivery methods. After this uh, you are going to check the expression right. So, you can actually be able to check the expression in the intercellular system or the secretory proteins and depending upon this you can be able to harvest the cells accordingly and then you can actually be able to filter these cells or filter the proteins so that you can actually be able to remove the debris and you can actually be able to detect the protein into the media or into the uh, into the cytosol by the activity assay or the western blotting. This is also we are going to discuss in detail when we are going to discuss about the blotting techniques. Compared to this you can also have the permanent expression. So, the steps remains the same for the permanent expression also that you are going to in, uh, transform the cells, you are going to transfect the cells, you are going to select the cells for the uh, integration of the particular cassette into the genome and then you are going to use that for the different types of expression system. So, these are the sum of the steps you are going to clone the foreign DNA into the appropriate mammalian expression system, you seed the cells, you transfect the cells, then you select the transfected cells, uh, you can actually be able to take the small A cot and you can actually be able to do the screening with the help of the some of the screening methods right that we are going to discuss in detail when we are going to discuss about the screening of the uh, transformed cells. And once that is been done you can actually be able to um, you know. Uh, select those transformed cells. So, this is for example, you are going to use the uh, transfect uh, the uh, cloning rings and that is how you can be able to select these uh, cells and then you can propagate them into a large quantities and then ultimately you are going to check the expression of the particular protein with the help of the western blotting or the activity assay. So, these are the some of the steps uh, which you are going to require. I am not going to grow through with these steps, but if you are interested you can read the content and then you can actually be able to do the selection of the particular cell with the help of a technique which is called as a flow cytometry. So, with the help of the flow cytometry you can even select the uh, cells which are expressing the high protein versus uh, low protein that also uh, and uh, flow cytometry is also not the beyond the capacity uh, scope of this particular uh, lecture. Now, uh, when you are want to do the uh, permanent expressions or the transient expressions, you also have a choices of what kind of promoter you want to use into the vector right. And depending upon the promoters you can actually have either the constitutive expression or the permanent ex or inducible expressions. So, you can actually have the constitutive expressions like uh, you can have the these promoters belong to the housekeeping genes and as a result the expression is non inducible the protein production start with the growth of a cell and as a result it is proportional to the cell mass which means as the cell is growing it is actually going to give you the more and more proteins. And similar to that we also have the inducible expression system. So, inducible expression system is useful for the expression of a toxic protein or protein with the pleiotropic or non specific effects and that you are going to achieve with the help of a inducer. So, as soon as you will put the inducer it is actually going to induce the production of the protein production. So, it is actually going to allow the protein production from the cell. So, that is why you can actually be able to trigger the protein production whenever you want right. So, uh, it would not be under the control of housekeeping genes or it would not be under the control of the promoter belonging to the housekeeping genes. So, it is actually going to be inducer. So, it is actually going to induce and that is why these kind of expression systems are good for the toxic proteins or the protein which are actually going to disturb the cellular physiology of a particular cell. So, this with this uh, we have discussed about the different types of expression system, we have discussed about the different types of host systems, what you can actually be able to utilize for the recombinant DNA technology. What we have discussed, we have discussed E. coli as an expression system. So, that is a 
uh, that is uh, belonging to a prokaryotic system. Uh, apart from that, we have also discussed about the uh, bacillus subtilis. So, we have also discussed about the bacillus subtilis as an expression system and uh, in the previous lecture, we have also given a very detailed comparative analysis under what condition you should use the bacillus subtilis versus under what condition you should use the E. coli. Now, talking about the eukaryotic expression system, you can actually be able to have an option of using the yeast as an expression system or insect cell line as an expression system or the mammalian system. Either of these method can be utilized for as per your requirement, right. So, if you want to use the cells which are very simple and you want to use a simple method, then you can actually be able to use the yeast and expression system because the yeast is behaving like a bacteria, but it is a eukaryotic system. It is um, propagations and manipulations and all those kind of procedures are very much uh, standardized. So, you can be able to use that, uh, but yeast is also having its own limitations that it may not give you the lot of uh, post translational modifications uh, which are being reported for the mammalian system or other kinds of things. Similarly, we can in the yeast, yeast insect cell line system, you are actually going to use the baculovirus uh, as a for the transformations and you can actually be able to. So, you have to clone the recombinant gene into a baculo expression system and then the baculo expression system you have to use for transfecting the insect cell line and then you can be able to utilize this insect cell line. So, baculo expression system take care of many of the those uh, reported uh, post translational modification protein folding problems and other kinds of things, but they are still having some kind of limitations and other kinds of things. And all these limitations are actually being taken care when you are talking about the mammalian expression system. So, mammalian expression system is going to give you the uh, full support or full uh, support in terms of the protein folding machinery, uh, translational modifications and all other kinds of uh, processing. But the problem is that mammalian expression system is very costly, uh, the procedures are very uh, time consuming which means like uh, cloning the protein into a vector, transforming the transfecting the protein and then screening selection all those are very very time consuming compared to the other two uh, eukaryotic uh, expression system. So, uh, it is desirable, but uh, and at the end the protein production is also very very less compared to the insect cell line expression system or the yeast expression system. So, these are the some of the host strain, but you can actually be able to use for the uh, for the protein production or the for the recombinant DNA applications. With this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss more about the uh, uh, other component that is the transforming agents. So, we will discuss about the transforming agents for the E. coli expression system, we will discuss about the transforming agents for the eukaryotic expression system and so on. So, with this, I would like to conclude my lecture. Thank you.